Out where dreams come true. Hey, welcome back, everyone. <laughs> What's up, guys? I don't know. Why did we start singing Fifel? I have no idea. I only know I just, that from Community. I know it from Fifel, um, but like Community is what I think of anytime I sing it now. It's not. It's not about Fifel anymore. It's about Troy Nabed. Oh yeah, <laughs> Troy <I'm>, Nabed. <laughs> is it worth going back and watching Fifel? They're they're good. They're good. Uh, I mean, it it'll be better if you watch it with children, okay, and less creepy. Yeah. But uh, I mean, from what I remember, Five Will Goes West was was good. There's a lot of good like unspoken of like cartoons from our youth because we were just oversaturated with it all. Yeah. We got yeah. we got all of the all of the cartoons and like. If it wasn't like Disney or anything, like it kind of got pushed down. Like Titan AE, I don't know if you remember that. I know the name, but I, I don't think I ever saw it. So it was one of like two movies ever done by Fox's animated division, mm-hmm. and the other one was Anastasia, which people think oh, is a Disney yeah. movie. Both oh, of those that's not fil- a Disney movie. Oh, that's right. It's Fantasia. F- Fantasia, yes. Fantasia is a Disney movie, but Anastasia was done, and it had a great soundtrack, and it's got that song "Once Upon a December," like. Every white girl knows and loves. Yeah. And they think it's a Disney movie, and it's not. Uh, Titan AE was the same thing. They dumped a shit ton of money into Titan AE, and I have the VHS somewhere. Uh, but it was phenomenal. I loved it. It was great when I was a kid, and I watched it probably like six, seven years ago. I watched it again, and I was like, this holds up. Like, it was good. But after that movie, that the animation division of Fox folded because they just didn't make enough money. It wasn't – people weren't going to, like – 20th Century Fox for animated films. Was so. it was it because the name wasn't good? Because both films were good, right? Uh, Anastasia did well. Um, Titan, I know, what was Titan A.E. Titan, A. About? Titan After Earth. So it was about this guy that uh, went on a mission and they were trying to find uh, there was this... You can pull uh, it a little bit closer. There was like this planet generator basically. Okay. And it was a- AE was after earth. So they were looking for, uh, like a way to create a new earth basically. So, cause the one that, that we had was like gross and going to die and like explode and stuff. Okay. So the mission was to find, um, this machine and like fire it up and bring people to it and whatever. And it was really good. It was, other than the fact that they used, uh, can you take me higher in the, in the movie? That's great. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was appropriate at the time. It was like 1999, so everybody was like, "Creed's the best." I feel like what happened with those, because th- there were a lot of animated movies that were more like e- young adult, basically. Yeah. Young adult books turned into movies, mm-hmm. and I think that just doesn't play well. Because ki- because uh, like teenagers just like, I'm not a kid. I don't watch cartoons. I watch adult stuff like Law and Order, SVU, and King of Queens. <laughs> I love King of Queens. Kevin James is my boy. Yeah, it's. I think you're right. At some point, like teenagers, just uh, they just decide that they're like, I'm not into that baby stuff anymore, and they stop. Like, even though, like, as grown adults, it's like, yeah, I'll go see The Incredibles. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I think now it's different too, because cartoons are now just so pervasive. Yeah, I mean, Seth MacFarlane kind of opened the door with all of his like adult animated series and whatnot. So yeah, I think that, him in uh, Adult Swim. Adult, yeah, Adult Swim did that too. They they were just like, we're gonna make cartoons for adults because like, adults like the stuff too. Mm-hmm. So it worked out well. But yeah, I, Titan AE was was good, and I think I can't remember, but I feel like Fox might have also done the Fivel ones, but I'm not 100 percent certain on that. It might, might be like Universal or something. I don't I don't quite remember. Yeah, but uh, I know it's. I don't think it's Disney. I'm like ninety eight percent sure it's not Disney. I'm pretty sure it isn't either. Because they couldn't have done it on NBC if it wasn't. I think it's a Universal property. But and Disney would put it in the vault all the time. Yeah, like we we would know if That's it's true. A Disney. They're like, oh, Fivel's coming back. Oh boy, it's been seven years to the day. Buy it right is now. That, is that how long they wait? Uh, seven it, years. It. I think it's longer than that. Like they put stuff in the vault. Uh, what was it like? They just put Snow White back in, and I think it won't be out for a while. I think it's I think it's monumental like uh, points. Like I like think it's 10, like 25, 10, 25, 50, 50, 50 75, 100. Yeah. So I think I don't think we'll see Snow White again for a long time. That makes sense. 
the, yeah, whatever. But, I mean, it the, makes it, sense to do it at those. Yeah, points. no, of course the internet's a thing, so I don't really care. Yeah, <laughs> it's it, it's just collectible. I can watch whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, I'm an adult. I I know the internet. I know how the internet works, but um, kind of backpacking off of this stuff. Um, and I know you haven't watched it yet, but you have an interest in watching it. I got to watch the Robin Will Inside My Mind, uh, Robin Williams documentary HBO did. Last, oh yeah, yeah. You said you night. wanted to talk about. That. Yeah, it was really interesting, and um, I mean, I feel like it's it's like a it's a serious ish topic because he suffered from some things, um, but uh, having gone through uh, therapy this year, not really having addressed that. Uh, very openly on the podcast and stuff and, and not even to people a lot of people that I know you know most people that I know don't know that I went to therapy this year and like right. I did that um, it definitely like different things in in the the documentary stuck out to me enough so that I'm gonna watch it quite a few times just because um, like what so one of the questions that, that is that was asked of him um, the first I would say the first 30 to, to 35 minutes is all done with Robin Williams layover work like voice work mm -hmm. um, and it's just cut from different interviews and stuff and someone asks him you know if he was ever if he ever had a fear of abandonment and he was like well when you're young he goes I feel like you you are he's like I feel like you have that just just in you when you're young and uh, I, I've until very recently it struggled with that a lot, a fear of abandonment, of abandonment in just uh, every sense, like friends, uh, relationships, family members, like because I've I've had different relationships in on all facets disappear and just without a trace and without any sort of like indication. That yeah, that was it happen. just kind of just fades out, and you're just like. God. What closure? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I've just perpetually dealt with like non closure in my life, and it's really it was really weird to hear him say that because it again it, the way I think about it is that everyone's fixed and everyone's right and like or at least that's how I did think about it. I don't think about it this way anymore. But it was like everybody's got it better or easier than I do. And when he said that, it really brought it down. It was like. Oh yeah, there are other people that like have this issue or this this mindset moving forward, and uh, in in seeing his death and in watching that uh, spoilers twenty fourteen he died. Um, what? <laughs> um, in seeing how he kind of handled uh, the Parkinson's and the dementia, uh, it that that's my new fear uh, because uh, by no means am I on a Robin Williams type level of of brain activity, but I consider myself to be a quick witted individual. I'm mm -hmm. very fast. I'm very quick on my feet and to, to see or, or to hear people talk about him towards the end, how there were days where he was just very OCD and he couldn't get out of his own way. And like he was falling on words and he couldn't like stay dialed in and they kind of chalked it up to the Parkinson's medicine. And then there's other days that he was on like that's my that's my new fear. My new fear is is not being all there, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that it's again to a much lesser degree than Robin Williams. That man was like you can make all the jokes you want about he's verbal vomit and whatnot, but that man was he thought faster than everyone. Yeah, his brain just operated at a higher level, and yeah. it no, was ridiculous. I, I think that's uh, I think that's a better fear to have than death. Yeah. Or abandonment. Well, because you, that's always going to happen. Exactly. At least with and Parkinson's and, and dementia, there's only so much you can do, but at least there are things you can do. Yeah. And I, I mean, that, that's what's cool about it now is you can, we have, you know, even from 2014 to now, there's been discoveries and things and they're talking about different foods that you can eat that help, you know, cope with that stuff and, and different parts of your brain that like... If you eat this food, it better helps this fire. And like, it's crazy uh, the world that we live in. But I mean, you think, you think about it and like just the, his battles with, uh, with, uh, substance abuse, you know, for like three years in the late seventies, early eighties, he was basically on like a booze and Coke fueled bender like the yeah. whole time. And, uh, you know, he relapsed with alcohol. I didn't realize it was like. 2007 2006 something like that he relapsed with alcohol 
And then shortly after that, they, he started dealing with the Parkinson's and the dementia. Well, you remember when he got that sitcom with Sarah Michelle Gellar? It was like... What was it called? Uh, oh, God. Also, who's Sarah Michelle Gellar? She is Daphne in the Scooby-Doo live-action movies, married to Freddie Prince Jr. Oh, it was the... Um it was like an afterlife one or something, right? Something like they worked at like a talent agency and he was the boss and she was his daughter. I think I might were, be confusing that with good life. Yeah. That is uh, one that's currently on with Ted Danson and Kristen Bell. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I know what you're talking yeah. about. I saw an episode. Yeah. So apparently while on set for that, um, different people had seen him and like talked to him and they were like, something's wrong with Robin. Mm-hmm. They're like, we can't figure it out. And like Billy Crystal had said it, he was on the interview. They interviewed his oldest son from his first marriage. Like they, they went all out and like at the end I was like, wow, like you, there's so much that he get he doesn't get appreciated for. And, uh, you know, that was crazy. It was crazy. And, and like I said, it, it, it was very enlightening for me, for someone who's gone through some, some different difficult mental hurdles yeah. in the last damn near calendar year. Um, yeah, it's almost been a year. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, since the incident. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was very eye opening to me, and it, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I you know I've always loved Robin Williams. He's he's a god in my house. So I think I was going to like it either way. But I would definitely recommend it to you or to anyone who who is even remotely interested. You learn more about the man uh, than just like apparently off stage or off camera. I mean, don't or give it all away. He, well, apparently he was just very subdued. Like, oh, I can imagine that. It's yeah. a lot of energy to to do that. I mean, he sweat like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Especially if he's, because that kind of stuff. The because he also dealt with depression mm-hmm. and anxiety, from what I understand. That stuff doesn't go away; it just becomes a lot easier to manage. So if he has to always be on, and I don't know if he was like a more introverted person who just had, it's like big personality. Yeah. I can imagine that being incredibly draining. Yeah, I think he, when, uh, and this isn't in the doc, but my parents, I don't know if your parents were like my parents, but anytime Inside the Actor's Studio was on with James Lipton. No, I just watched that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, my family. I'm an old man. Yeah, my family loves that. And I, I got into it too. But anytime the Robin Williams one was on, the TV, the channel didn't change. Oh, and yeah. like my family in my house, like if there's a commercial, we slip, we switch the channel, we go to something else. But when Robin Williams inside the actor studio was on it, the channel didn't change. Nobody held the remote. Like it was insane. And he described himself and I've, I've taken this, uh, and I used it to describe myself occasionally is, uh, an introverted extrovert. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to be, I want to be int- an introvert and, but I, I'm just, I'm an extroverted individual. Like I, I, in, I can be alone and I can be in the quiet moments and I can appreciate that, but that's just not what the expectation is, you know, especially in what I do and, and how I act and how I've kind of, you know, I was, I was talking to the expectation someone. from other people or, um, or what do you it's mean a by mixture. That? It's a mixture for sure. I, I expect my, I expect, expect a certain level of energy for myself on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's now an expectation of other people. Like I was talking to uh, one of the trivia individuals last night, she was like, oh, yeah, I had a public speaking thing and I got a 90 on that and da, da, da. And we were going back and forth talking about public speaking. And I was like, yeah, like I've never I like apparently that's like the number one fear of most people is public speaking. Right. And I just can't I don't get it. <laughs> like I just that's something I can never I can never understand because I just when I have to be an extrovert, I can. I just turn it on. I, maybe I don't want to be, but I can. Like if I'm upset or if I'm having a hard time or whatever, it's just something I can choose to to turn on, and it's like a switch. Yeah, I think you're. I think the terms you're using are wrong, though, because that's just being a performer. Yeah. Like, um, where do you get your energy from? I don't know. Like, if you're if you're tired, are, would you rather hang out with a small group of people or go to? a large place oh small group of people for sure so you're an introvert who's a performer yeah uh, i've i've just always said i'm an i'm an i'm an extroverted introvert like i'm oh yeah no who, okay yeah okay yeah that's the the he says he's uh yeah i think that's how he phrased it as well i'm i'm an introverted extrovert like i'd be super okay just staying home all the time yeah just like a homebody <laughs> real okay with it but it's just not 
it's also something that like I feel like if it happened, I'd be like, this sucks. I hate this. If what happened? If I just stayed home all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like as much as I'm like, I'm like, oh, it'd be so great. I'm like, no, wouldn't I get so bored and like cranky and shit? Yeah. But. Dude, yeah. that's one of the reasons that I wanted to, aside from like at the time, I, I was like not doing well financially. Yeah. But I don't like living alone because I'm a, I don't know. I'm, I have a lot of introverted tendencies, mm-hmm. but I do have to be around people. I like people, just a certain subsect of them. Yeah. Because a lot, it, many people suck. Yeah. But. You don't suck. I, I appreciate so, that. So I wanted to have a, a roommate. We just signed a lease for a year, so. <laughs> so I, actually, this whole thing was just me sitting you down to tell you that you suck, dick. You suck. And not the good kind. <laughs> but Do you know that? Do, do you know that? But we, that's, that's last week's joke. Um, but when, uh, yeah, just like being alone, it just gets super boring. Even if, if I'm not lonely and I'm doing stuff, I'm just like, all right, but like humans would be cool. <laughs> Because when I was I was an RA for three and a half years, and the first two, the first year I had roommates. It was uh, Tim and then this guy George. Yeah. Uh, but then after that, it was just by myself. So if I was on duty, I sat at home, did yeah. nothing, went to the office for eight hours, came back, slept. It gets boring as fuck. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. Mm-mm. I mean, video games helped, but yeah, of there was uh, there was no internet, or well, there okay. was, but there was no gameable internet. There's only so much you can you can do in, in that time, I imagine, before you're like, all right, really tired of playing Crash Bandicoot. Like, I need something else. Yeah, I need some other form of stimulation. And I always did it at the beginning of the year too, so I didn't have homework. Because I just wanted to get it all out of the way. Yeah. So it was a lot of sitting and waiting for uh, 4 p.m. Was it 4 p.m. on Sunday so I could go to the gym? <laughs> just just kind of like, all right, cool. I can only jerk off so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Eight. I'm not going to do it again, but I'm going to do it again. It's just going to hurt. <laughs> it just blows out mist. You're just like, I don't. That's weird and uh, new. I don't. Uh, <laughs> just sounds painful. But yeah, I would definitely say check out that doc. Um, it was it was a very uh, like I said, it was a very enlightening experience. Yeah, it was something that I uh, I appreciated more after having watched it. I watched it at I went to sleep at like six. It's almost two hours long. Mm-hmm. So like the fact that I stayed awake and coherent the whole time, I was like, this was good. Yeah, that's a good sign. I liked this. I want to go back. You said something about. Um uh, oh, how how you perceive the world that everyone's got their shit together. Mm-hmm. I was listening to the H3 podcast with Bo Burnham. Yeah. And he described it really well. At least I, I felt so. Um, that it when you have anxiety, for example, mm-hmm. it's like you, you're you riding a bull, but you everyone else looks like they're equestrians. Which uh, is a super good way to describe it because everyone's riding a bull. Yeah. Yeah, it, for whatever reason, it's something that I... I forget pretty consistently i forget that there's a lot of people that deal with the same shit that i deal with um and and maybe that's uh, that could be like me being selfish or pig-headed or you know a, a negative thing but it could also just be uh the the positive person inside of me that's just hoping that other people don't deal with it because i don't like it and right. i've never i've never liked it and when people come up to me with stuff like that, you know, I, I love to be a, a bounce board to be able to give them, you know, positive feelings and energy. And, you know, people have, that I do know have approached me about doing therapy and stuff. And I, I really can't uh, appreciate it enough. You know, I only did it for, I want to say like six months. Six months feels right. Sounds um, about right. Yeah. I only did it for about six months. But in that six month time, the, the growth that I had, I felt was, uh, phenomenal and I couldn't have done it on my own. I was always that person that was like, you know, I'm doing it myself. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, it was really cool getting to do that. And, uh, you know, talking to people now after the fact, I'm like, if you think you want to go or you think that it could help you even in the slightest go, it'll help you more than you ever really, than, than you could have imagined. Yeah, most of the time I, I agree. If it's 
some stuff you can get just by talking to friends. It's when it's the when it's heavy stuff. I mean, I, I know that for me personally, I probably should have gone to a therapist at some point. Yeah. Um, I just kind of lucked out in having uh, a couple different friends or people that I knew at the time that were very insightful people yeah who either grappled with it to some degree or just could understand and give me a new perspective so most of the time if i talked it out with someone like you or um my friend jess i talked it out with her a couple times that stuff usually did it for me yeah um so and just because of the monetary thing i usually say see if there's a friend you can talk to no of but course. there's there is a a benefit to having the third party Who's, who's unbiased, you can kind of unload to them, and it's almost like, here, here's all this stress that I have. You deal with it. I'm going to go. <laughs> you take it. I'm going to go over here now. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was nice. It was nice. It was something that I had never, uh, like I said, I was always like, no, I'm fine. And I talk to people, and I hash things out and stuff. But last, uh, oh, last year, two years ago, uh, was just a very difficult year for me personally. And uh, it, it just got to a point where there was too much to be able to, like, cut off a sliver and deal with it myself because yeah. it was all just coming at me in waves. And it, honestly, like I said, if uh, if anybody feels that way, anybody listening to this, whether you're a friend of ours or or, you know, someone who randomly happened upon this, uh, definitely, definitely uh, I can't recommend it enough. From someone who never thought that they needed it, who who thought that they could just do it themselves. Um, There's also those services. Uh, I know Philly's been pumping it a lot. Yeah, I'm very I interested. Forget what in that. it's called. There's a couple of them, but where you can just text mm -hmm. to it, or I think they'll do FaceTime and everything too. So you're you're yeah. still getting an actual therapist. It's just to your phone. Yeah, and it's so much cheaper too. Well, it's so much cheaper and it's so much more accessible. You just shoot a text message. Yeah, whenever you're and, ready. Too. Yeah, exactly. So you might be getting someone who's in California who's three hours behind you, so you can go it at, at nine o'clock at night, and it's not a huge inconvenience. Yeah, no, it was it was it was really helpful. It was a very uh, important chapter in my life. So I def like I said, watching that documentary mixed with everything that I went through and whatnot, I was like. I have a new appreciation for this man who is no longer alive. Yeah. But do you still meditate? Uh, when I get super stressed, when mm -hmm. I get like, I talked to my mom about it. My mom gets stressed occasionally and I tried, I got her on headspace mm -hmm. and I was like, just, just try it. Like when I get super stressed and I need to like calm down, I'll meditate and I'll sit. I can, I can get, I'm up to like seven minutes uninterrupted where I can just sit in a good headspace and like, relax and zen out and then after that i just like my body's looser i feel good like yeah. and it's i don't i don't meditate enough now or i don't meditate more now i think because i like having it as a tool that i don't use all the time and i don't i don't necessarily think that if i continue to go to the well it'll be less effective but i like knowing that i can like quiet my mind when i need to because i like i like the thoughts in my head i like thinking about oh okay i see what you're saying a hundred different things all the time like it if i did not go insane like if i had a one-track mind i'd be like yeah yeah like fuck. yeah so i like knowing that i can do it when i need to and and i use it more as a tool than i do like just people that meditate daily and i like just don't think i could do it yeah I just, or just it i mean if it doesn't feel beneficial you don't do it yeah like, exactly i I'd think about two years ago maybe a year and a half I had a like a two three week period where I was doing it every day. Mm -hmm. It was helpful, but I I don't like sitting still like that. My best kind of meditative meditation is active meditation. Mm -hmm. So if it's something like um, running, that that's why I've, I've gotten into it. I only don't do it when my legs hurt. Yeah. Uh, but because it's it's like eight minutes where I have one thing I focus on, and then it kind of transitioned into its own. It's own kind of meditation, but then I'm doing something. I'm still being productive, which like, quiets the part of my mind that says, you're not fucking doing enough. Yeah. Do more shit, Josh. Yeah. You have that problem a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your brain is always like, Josh, do more things. And you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> I'm so, I, I've done so many things yeah. today. No, you haven't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not, and I don't know, I don't know when that started. I'm assuming it was when I was doing seven letters because I was the only one running like my livelihood. Yeah. But maybe before, maybe before. 
I mean, it, it's probably something that that in to some degree has always been like in you, but just to a lesser degree. And then when you started Seven Letters, it was like, okay, we're gonna have a flare up. This yeah. is the herpes of the mind. Let's burn yourself, uh, <laughs> burn yourself out. Yeah, let's burn the candle at both ends with a fire hose gun thing. Oh, good, very good words. Yeah, I lost it. I uh, had it and I lost flamethrower. it. Flamethrower. That one. The That's one from the, one. the Boring Company. Yeah. Yes. I oh wish I had bought that. Oh my god. So so, now that that's come up, what the fuck is going on with people giving Elon shit? I mean, he's kind of a dick. He's yeah, but he who cares? There's people that have way less money than him that are way more dickish. Yeah. Why are you trying to give the guy shit for helping kids? Like, who cares if it wouldn't have helped or what? He just did oh, what that he part, could. Yeah, that part's fine. The part that I start to have an issue with is where he called the the rescuing guy a pedo. Yeah, no, that wasn't great. Like, I'm not going to defend childish. that. Yeah. No, he's like mm, rubber. You're glue. Like it's yeah. like, come on, Elon. You're you operate at a higher wavelength than 98 percent of the people on Twitter. Come on. Yeah. I would say 99%, maybe 99.9. Yeah. Well, it's like him and Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. It's like he's punching down. Yeah. And I get it. It's frustrating to have the media and a ton of people just try to shit talk you. But like... I just don't understand where the original shit talk came from. They're like, this doesn't make any sense. And it's like, who cares? The dude's wasting money. It's not your money. He's putting his own money up to it. Like... Yeah. People are upset that he's using it as a, a way to do PR. Which I don't, I mean, sure, who gives a shit? He's yeah. trying to help. Yeah, like, he, he's going to get attention for it, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't it's think. It's his company. It, yeah, yeah, it's his company. It, there's nothing wrong with doing something good to be seen. It's not the best, but it is still getting something good happening. The net, the end result is a good thing happened. Yeah, of course. Like, But it's it's the same thing as like, Doing that is the same thing as, you know, Apple buying a billboard in the center of Times Square. It It's visual. You're going to get looks and clicks because of it. People are going to go, oh, my God, look, they have a thing and it says a thing. It, it's the same thing, except he spent the money on a, on a thing that was going to help these children or potentially help the children. Obviously, they got out, which is great. But it, it for me, it does the same thing. He's advertising, basically. Yeah. And who he spent the money advertising to help someone hopefully and build a device that if it didn't come in handy now, it could come in handy later. Yeah. And I think the argument is that he, because he's piggybacking off of a negative thing that happened, which I would agree with if he was just doing the thing that people do on social media and say, Oh, this bad thing happened. I feel sad. Let's talk about me now. <laughs> That's that's Didn't dumb they like reach that, out to him though too? Weren't they like, "Hey, can you help us?" Someone someone did. Yeah. But th- and that's that's where I think the distinction is is that he wasn't just taking this tragedy and using it a, as a way to talk about himself. Yeah. Yeah, he used it to pump up his company, but he's using what he has to to help or try to try to help at least. Yeah. And he, that's what what do you want? <laughs> what do you want from a genius billionaire? What if he went and just think about like the thing that that upsets me is nobody's talking about the other end of the spectrum. What if he went Nah, fuck you. Everybody would be like, Elon Musk is a horrible person. Yeah. He's the worst. And like, no, the guy would like, somebody reached out to him, whether it was like the governor or the president or the janitor. I don't care. Somebody was like, hey, man, we need help. Can you help us? And he went, okay. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what, what, what do you want? It's, it's one of those damned if you do. People just like to. Yeah. People like to be pissed off. So you just do whatever. People just like to be most, upset. About. Do, do what's the most good for yourself or what feels good. It's it's crazy, man. I, I, I don't. Uh, and he he is like you said, he's punching down. He's punching down real bad because, you know, calling that guy a, a pedophile basically like. Come on, kinda, you're better than it's that. It's trashy. Yeah, you're better than that. Hold yourself to a higher standard. But nobody should have given. He's just trying to help. Like, <laughs> it just baffles me. It baffles me. And and you and I have discussed it. You know, living where we live, and like we've talked about just in general, like people. People are way dumber than I thought, and that yeah. that that includes me. Like I'm I. I have always held myself to like this. Oh, I know. I'm. I'm. I know enough about a lot of things that I can. T- no, Pat, you're stupid. In the grand scheme of things, you're real fucking dumb. But there are people that are just like, he has more money than me. I'm gonna hate him. 
Where's yeah. the consciousness of thought in that? They, that's less stupidity and just unhappiness. Because people are unhappy and instead of dealing with it themselves, blame it on someone else. Someone who just because they're there. It's yeah. like, Hi, you're in the public eye. I hate you. Yeah, you're... Why do you get that and I don't get that? Well, did you make <laughs> Tesla? No, but I'm tall. I don't care, dude. All right, George. We got it. You're tall. <laughs> I understand. Good for you, buddy. Uh, yeah, that that was the the one of the things that's happened in recent weeks that, again, if, if Eli, uh, Elon, not Eli, if Elon would have just been quiet and he just would have, like, kept to his own shit, I would be just, I, we'd hang a Tesla flag out front, like, mm. everything, but... Him, him calling him a pedophile was was a bit, was a bit much. Yeah, he started to get more aggressive in the past like year or two, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think he's just sick of it. He's just trying to help. He's just trying to do what he thinks is right. You know, he wants to innovate and he wants to create, and people are like, "No, you're dumb." And it's like, <laughs> "What? What are you talking about?" Yeah, and I, I can't say I don't. I have not done research on him, but everything that I've seen, it's. He's making successful companies. They're all for the betterment of people and Earth. Yeah, I mean, Earth feels. I think everything because it's it's um Solar City. Yeah, Tesla, Tesla, boring company. Tesla's huge with uh, being better for the environment and shit. Those cars are they... long, long term. Yeah, yeah. Short term, like it's kind of a weird thing because once, how do you make the battery with fossil fuels? Yeah, so. Mm. Initially, not great. Yeah, it's really about. But it's the same. It's about building the technology. Well, no, because we have everything in place already too. Mm. I think, and batteries are supposed to be really shitty, like the process that it takes to make. Yeah. But it's it's like a high startup cost too. Once we have it, it it then gets cheaper as as it expands. Yeah, cheaper, and then depending on how long Teslas run for, if it's something like a Toyota. And or a Honda, and it runs for years and years and years. Yeah, great. If it's something like a BMW, and it shuts <laughs> down in three years, well then, all right, Elon, we got to talk. Yeah, there, there there needs to be a discussion. I I've, I've talked to a couple people that have a Tesla, and they, they love it. They they're like it. it smooth. Uh, again, they're still very new, mm-hmm. so it's not like they haven't run into like the ten year yet, where they're like, I've had this car for ten years, and it's like. How's it doing? They're like, real bad. Yeah. Real, real bad. Is it Model S? Uh, yeah. I don't remember. It was one of my ex's uh, family had one. And uh, who else? There was another There was another one. I don't remember who it was. But somebody else had one. And I was like, oh, how do you like it? They were like, it's really cool. Like, it's really, really cool. And I was like, that mm-hmm. answers none of my questions. It's cool. That's all you need to know. I mean, it is cool. They're they're very they're very sleek looking vehicles. It makes mm. me feel like uh, iRobot. You remember that movie with, yeah. with Will yeah, Smith? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, this is, these are iRobot cars. I don't like the Model Three look as much. Which one is that? The budget one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The S looks very sleek and futuristic, mm. and I think it's the fact that there's nothing on the front of the three. It's just the there's no grill, obviously, because yeah. you don't need it. But I think it's just like a little emblem. So it looks like, um, remember in, I think it was Wolverine Origins when Deadpool came out yeah. and his mouth was just, pfft, yeah, it looks like that. <laughs> it's the visual interpretation of what made everyone so mad about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> My God, that was so bad. It was a bad movie. It was a bad movie. So bad. Well, we don't need to hash that out it, now. It's fine. It's fine. They, they rectified the entire situation. Uh, it's fixed. The timeline is fixed. Yeah. Uh, both. One and two were pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. Big fan. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was, that was crazy. Uh, to just keep backpacking off famous people that we can add to the tags of this. <laughs> uh, I know you and I uh, have talked about doing a podcast for uh, this gentleman. And I'd still like to do a full out one, but just give the people a taste. Oh, Gambino. Of talking about Mr. Donald Glover. Yep. I Th- love- oh, those are two different people, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Who there was something going around was it was it one of our friends? Like their mom was like, Oh my god, Donald Glover's hosting SNL and they were like, Yeah, I know and they were like, And Childish Gambino's gonna be the the music performance and he was like, They were the same person, mm-hmm. mom and she's like, No, they're not. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's funny. I, I don't know because I don't really go on That's right, you're Facebook not a, or you're anything. Not a Facebooker. No. Yeah. But very possibly. Yeah. Well, I I know people that are like, 
what, Donald Glover and Josh Gam, you know the same person? And I was like, uh, yeah. Where have you been for the last 10 years? Yeah. He's like 35. He started blowing up with 30 Rock when he was like 24. Like, where? where I think it's you? because a lot of people, one, haven't followed him from, from Derek Comedy days. Yeah. And then a lot of people just hear um, the music. They he don't, really they does. They don't watch it. They don't he, see it. He does have a different persona, though. As as like when he's Childish Gambino, there he like carries himself different. Like in music videos, you see it. Like yeah. He carries himself a little different. He's a little more like like when he talks about Atlanta or when he's talking about you know albums or when he's you know touring Gambino or talking about the CD or something. He just kind of has like a different vibe. He had an interview with Conan, <clears throat> I think, one of the late night people, and. Oh, that was yeah, one yeah. of the, the topics was that he had very different personas for it or not very different but he had different personas and he, he shifted and it is super subtle but you can see it's going from like this to like a this yeah it goes to like a smoldery like i'm a badass smolder like angry a lot of internal yeah shit. but that that's what i was kind of what i was getting at is that they People don't watch the music; they listen to the music. So yeah. they hear of Childish Gambino, and then they see Donald Glover in Community, and that was kind of it for a while. Yeah. So there was no reason to be like, "Oh, that's the same person." Oh, oh they're the same guy. But for the sake of uh, enraging everyone, fucking idiots! What kind of fucking <laughs> idiot doesn't know that they're the same person? You're all so dumb. <laughs> Probably don't know how to spell there, there, and there. Oh my god, that's one of my biggest pet peeves in the entire world. You know, I'm going to send all my texts incorrectly. Why now, would you right? do that? Because you don't. Cause you're dumb. I'd be so mad. I when people, I, I guess it won't upset me as much because I I know you know the difference. Yeah. But when people are just like, yeah, go over there, T H E I R. I'm like, mm-hmm. and they're like, what? I was like, that's not. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Okay, that's not the right one. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, what do you mean? I'm, okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna do this right. I can't conversate or converse with you anymore. I need to I need to leave. Yeah, and at the end of the day, doesn't matter. No, but like figure your shit out. Yeah, it's something so basic and easy. Like. Yeah, and I think it's like you said, if it's someone who I know knows the difference or who's just generally an intelligent person, yeah, I can, I'll give it a pass. Yeah, if there's an autocorrect thing that jumps in, I'm like, okay, you know, like I get it. But yeah, but if you're like an asshole and also dumb. <laughs> No. If you're an asshole and I know you and you do it, and I don't care if you know one way or not. I'm gonna put you on black. Yeah. <laughs> I have a podcast. <laughs> there was that I stopped I stopped talking to this girl uh like five years ago. I, I met her at a party, mm. got her number, and we were texting for a bit, and then she started throwing in like use with a U and your with a no. U R. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I can't do this. No. And I kept trying, and then I'm like, I'm good. Was she pretty? She was pretty, yeah. She was mm. super fit. She was like a, um, mm. I think she was a trainer at the UCF gym. That's upsetting. I forget. She's yeah. Real hot. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Live and learn. I can't. I couldn't do it either. If it makes you feel any better, like the U R thing. Like when I was young, cool, whatever. Like that was that was part of the lingo. That's how you talked because you yeah. had X amount of texts for the month. Everybody's got a limited texting now. Text yeah. the whole fucking thing. Yes. Yeah, Send right. the whole word. You've got time. What time are you saving? <laughs> T T Y L. In fact, normally there's autocorrect and it changes it and yeah. you have to go back. I mean, eventually back. it learns. Yeah, but, but you for have... the sake of us being right and everyone else being dumb, <laughs> you're all assholes. Yeah, everyone but us is stupid. <laughs> That's all this podcast was. We're just going to title this Everyone's Dumb But Us. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good title. No, but um, yeah, uh, Gambino and uh, Glover, I, whatever, he's, he's phenomenal. He's, he's, we did a. I don't know if we released that one or not, but one of the, it might be episode zero, but we, we did the first part of the 36 questions and we did the first 12. Yeah. I think we released that and we, we talked about, no, no, we, I I edited it. So it's there with the cuts back and forth, Uh but it's on, uh, YouTube, but it's not, it's private. Got it. Okay. Well, one of the questions that was asked was who you would, uh, if you could pick one, person to go on a dinner with who would you take and you said uh donald glover and i love that answer and it was something that didn't even cross my mind Mm -hmm. and it's because you would take something from that no matter what like if you were talking music or business or just life the dude has so much to give at he's like 35 he's 34 35 and he already has so much to just offer up for anything 
Yeah, he he's just good at whatever he does. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna do this, and they were like, Oh, you're the best. Yeah, Donald, fuck, he's so good. He's so good. Oh, I love him. No, I would love to meet him one day. When is that concert? September. September. September what? I don't know. Se- we got, we September. F- September. Remember, remember the <laughs> date of this concert. <laughs> remember, remember that date in September. Nope. <laughs> it like there was something happening in September. It was like the 14th or the 17th or it something like that. before Mike's birthday. I know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It was something 14th, 17th, somewhere in that like span of time. Yeah, the middle 16th, of the month. I don't, I don't know. Okay. It's probably like the 33rd of September or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it's my second favorite date. <laughs> Behind February 30th? March, September 11th. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. That's a good one, too. That's a, that's a good one. March, September 11th. Okay. Never heard that one before. It's uh, April Ludgate came up with it. Oh. And I forever. Yeah. Forever love it. Yeah. March, September. Oh, that's right. Ron Swanson. She's making she's making the appointments and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm there. We're on the, we're on the same page now. Wow. We are together. We are to, together. Together. No. One of the things that I think was really cool about, uh, they just did Solo. And if you didn't go see Solo, fuck you. Because it was good, and now they're not going to do any more spin-off Star Wars movies for five years, and that means I don't get a Ewan McGregor Obi-Wan movie. Mm-hmm. So, fuck you. They might still do that. That one actually has people asking for it. Yeah. It's no one a, asked for, her, for Solo. No. But he was great in that, and uh, when he was doing the press tour for it, uh, one of the things that I really liked was there was an interview they were doing with Sirius XM, and they were like, oh, Donald, so we were talking to the writers... And they said that they wrote Lando as pansexual. Did you know that? And like every, the whole cast is around him. They have, you know, Han and Amelia Clark and the chick who plays the robot. I don't know any of their names, but Amelia Clark because they're not important to me. <laughs> right. But um, but it's like, oh, my God. No, I didn't know that. What? Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. And he was like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they were like, what do you mean? Oh, uh, yeah. He goes, uh, he's in space. <laughs> You're just kind of like whatever I can get. And yeah. I was like, that's such a cool way to think about that. And he was like, yeah, he's like, what? You can't be picking in space. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just so straightforward and everybody was just kind of like sat there and they were like, damn Donald. <laughs> yeah. And his character is also just a big fuck machine. Yeah. So it makes sense that he, like he just, if, if he was on earth, he would at least be by. Yeah. He's just so. it, cause it's it presents more options. Yeah, he just needs a hole. Yeah. He's he was, just like, Oh, there's I, a hole for me to put my dick in? Awesome. I great. will do that. I would like to sex you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was one something that was really cool and he's very outspoken about, you know, obviously like love who you want to love and, and all that stuff. So I I just respect him for taking that stance in that way and uh and just kind of being like yeah, whatever. Like some people, you know, in, in Hollywood would be like, like Woody Harrelson wouldn't be like, yeah, this guy's pansexual. Like he'd be like, no, he punches Nazis in the face and fucks beautiful blonde women. Like, you don't think so? I no. feel like Woody, I don't know Woody Harrelson. I don't very either. Well. I just picked a name from someone who I thought was like kind of masculine. He's masculine, but I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he cares. That's the vibe I get. He's just like, whatever can i change it to clint eastwood yeah okay there you go clint yeah. eastwood wouldn't be like oh so you mean a 75 year old white man wouldn't wouldn't be cool with that probably conservative not. conservative white man <laughs> probably not if you oh my god have you seen gran turismo you know he wouldn't be okay with that <laughs> what happened what else i remember the movie he but. uses more racial slurs in that movie than like any Does he? movie there's so many really there's so many that's the one where he works on the car right I mean, that's like, yeah, that's a part of it. <laughs> but there's like so many racial slurs. I have to go back because I do not you have to that. watch it. But like, they're not like he's not using like the N word. Like he's using like deep, like old school, like, like spook. Like he's using oh, that yeah, form that, of like, like he's going, he's, he's pulling out the deep cuts. I forget <laughs> that that's a thing. Yeah. There's, he uses a bunch. Like he uses a, a like a considerable amount, at least in like. But that a film that was in like 2008 or something. Well, yeah, but the, the filming locate time doesn't really matter. Because the whole thing is to convey that he the, his character is a super racist, right? And yeah. He meets this young black kid, and then his opinion is changed. Yes. Right? Ultimately. So then it makes sense that he would use all those words. Yeah, but it was still like super jarring. 
because you're like, oh, you went with the deep cuts. You didn't even go for like the the normal stuff. And he directed it, which is just it's just weird. It was yeah, just weird. I think that's better. <clears throat> it makes more sense that way. Because if when was that movie set? Modern day? Yeah, I think so. So it's not an acceptable word anymore. No. So it would make sense that a, a deeply racist person o- old would, guy would use ones that are okay. Super old. They're guy. like someone's not going to shoot you for it, but like <laughs> everyone knows that. you're racist. <laughs> We get it. We get it. We understand. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like people of color. Yeah. Heard. Heard. No, that's... um. Yeah, I didn't mean to throw Woody Harrelson or Clint Eastwood under the bus. When you guys watch this, just know that I was just picking a name out of the air because I know that we're very well known. No, he's um, full of shit. He hates everyone. Everyone's the worst. That actually might be true. Like yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the title of this podcast is Everyone Who Isn't Us everyone, is Stupid. Yeah, Everyone Who Isn't Us Sucks. But we yeah, have a couple variations for the title now. Well, yeah, I, like. I mean, we can uh, we can just release it under different. Uh, I hate Jake Paul. Uh, we can do that one. <laughs> Jake Paul, Jake Paul, Jake Paul. <laughs> tags, 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 tags. Uh, what do you think about? So you've gotten into into the fight game recently. Uh, I will take all the credit for that. Mm-hmm. So this Cy, uh Jake Paul, not Jake Paul, uh, uh, Logan the, Paul, the other one. Yeah, Logan Paul. What do you think about this? Are you going to watch it? You're going to watch this boxing match, even though it's got yeah. headgear and boxing gloves. Yeah, and why not? I people I, can fight. I, I don't give a shit. I also, I just hope Logan gets knocked out. Yeah, I think what's stupid is that he's. Is it him or is it Side that's making a documentary about how they have never lost or who S- won? I think it's Sai, and it's coming out before. It's coming out before. before yeah, the- <laughs> it's it's fucking stupid. It's. I mean, I get it. Like from a business business perspective, they're doing the right thing. Yeah, no, I mean they're they're just trying to pump it up. They're like, look what I, look what we did, like undefeated. It's like yeah. you fought one time, another so little white guy. Correct. I mean, I guess. But Logan's set up already as a heel because he's a dick of a person. Yeah, and I mean that that press conference they did didn't do him any favors either. I think he went in like extra healy. And the fact I think they that they scripted it. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, like, okay, they, okay. they like met in the side, and they were like, "Okay, so you're gonna rip my hat off, and then you know, I'm gonna try and punch you in the face, but I'm not gonna punch you in the face, Logan, because we boys." Yeah. And like, it's, aren't the, both their? I don't know if Sai has a little brother too. Yeah, I think he does. They're, they're on fighting, the undercard. Right? It's, yeah. it's Jake Paul and <laughs> Jake Paul and Sai's younger brother. Or oh KSI. my god, it's kind of perfect. It's it's funny. I'm. When is it? I don't know. All I know is that I I on Philly D I watched the the snippets he put up of the press conference and mm-hmm. I was like you got me yeah you got me I just want to see Logan get punched in the face and I think I looked at you and I was like hey if they're ever just taking ballots <laughs> <laughs> yeah let me know because I'll sign up and I will gladly fight Logan Paul and just I oh god his How, face is, is just so guy? punchable is he I think he's tall I think he's t- he's tall and he's definitely built but oh yeah but I mean when that's like your job now yeah, exactly. He's like, I get to make videos. Like, I, I, if I, if that was, if this was our job, I'd be huge. <laughs> yeah, I would just lift all the time. <laughs> video lift, video lift. Exactly. That would be my line. Just eat clean and like, oh god, it'd be great. But I we, can't do we, that. Both of us already eat pretty clean. Yeah, we're doing all right. I, I think, have to make that bison. Yeah, so. it's pretty good. I might try to take a little bit, see if it messes with my stomach do again. Because it. it, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. <laughs> but that's a good place to wrap up because you have to go to work. I do have to go to work. So, uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This was just one. Uh, we haven't gotten a podcast out in a little bit, and we didn't want you guys to think that we forgot about you. All Justin. Uh, oh, Justin. <laughs> it's it's just Justin. It's just yeah, him. it's just Justin. <laughs> but we love you, Justin. And, uh, yeah, we should be back with some trivia stuff uh, next month, and we have another uh, a couple other podcasts lined up. Hopefully guests uh, can can stick to it and uh, we'll have more podcasts. That's what he's getting at. Yeah, that one. So love you. All right, and we'll see you guys next. Like, time. comment, subscribe, whatever. Okay, bye. Bye. Love you, Justin. <laughs>